The sound of revival that had it Hey everyone, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Evan and I work at Tigard. I am so excited for today as we are going to talk about friendship. Do you have any really good friends? I love getting together with my friends and just being able to spend time together. A lot of times we'll find ourselves breaking down because we are laughing super hard. 
Or we'll have serious conversations with each other, helping one another walk through something that we are struggling with. Good friends are a great resource that we have. We can trust them and lean on them when we need. As we continue into today, I want to challenge you to be thinking of some of your friends and how you can show them that they are important and that you care for them. So let's take a look at the video for today about friendship. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. It's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David was only a shepherd boy. But somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace in a high-ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine that David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like, Great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, you've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel, instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt, too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. And later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David. He's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then, King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again. And when he failed, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it's time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side! 
that is so not cool. As long as he's alive, you'll never be king. Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we promise to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul, and Jonathan went home. Now, Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. I love this story of Jonathan and David that, that we learned about today. They were such good friends. Even with all of the chaos in the world that surrounded them, they remained close. I want you to imagine being in Jonathan's, being Jonathan for a second. Put yourself in his sandals. He was in line to be the next king of Israel, but God chose David for this position. I don't know about you, but if I were Jonathan, I might have been a little upset and pretty frustrated with David. I don't know if I would help him out, but Jonathan doesn't do that. He values his friendship with David so much that he even gives him some of his royal possessions. Jonathan helped David as much as he possibly could, even risking his life for David's sake. See, Jonathan was a good friend and David understood that. He felt valued by Jonathan. Because of this, David kept his promise and made sure to always take care of Jonathan's family throughout his life. That's what friendship really looks like. That's what it looks like to love our friends the same way that God loves us. So keep thinking about how you can show your friends that they are important. And we will see you again next week.